Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So, I've been busy for the last two days laminating wood together. And today I decided, well, had some free time on my hands. Let's see how we did. And uh, I had to finish these off. So I had to cut the, um, uh, what do you call this, a cove cut. So I had to cut the cove cuts into these two uh, laminated blocks in order to create the uh, neck call, neck support call, and neck support. Now, if you don't know how these work, I'm going to give you a little idea, show you how they work. So, when you want to change strings on your guitar, sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain in the neck because of heights and stuff like that. So, this is my acoustic. So we're gonna, we, we need to change the strings. Now, I've got one of these cool little drills uh, from Ernie Ball called the Power Peg. And this can allow me to get in there without any problems. Now, if I do need a little bit of extra height, I can always take this little board here, move the brace up a bit, and the way my, my cove cut got done, I have a bit of an angle to it, and I can just wedge a piece of wood under the back end here. Gives me a little bit of extra height there that I can work with, and voila, I can change my strings and then tighten up the tuners, etc. And voila, we're all done. So, if I don't need the extra height, then we just leave it as is, and we give us some good support, and uh, we go and change our strings. And it makes your life a lot easier and simpler to do it this way, um, than to try and fiddle-faddle and putting it on the edge of a table, and oh, it can be such a pain, right? This makes life so much better. Now, the same one can be used on electric guitar as well. So I've got my Telecaster out here. Now, because an electric guitar is much shallower, we, we get a gap here. Now, I, I watched a few videos on, uh, you know, how these things are made and stuff, and I don't have a big, you know, um, pulsing belt sander or any kind of belt sander at this point. And uh, so to make this thing rounded on the bottom so it can kind of follow it, um, not able to do that so I left it square at the bottom right so with an electric guitar it leaves this big gap now you may or may not want that gap but it can certainly help get a lot of extra height out of your electric and again we can kick the board underneath and it keeps everything even right and the same thing if we just want to keep the block here for support we can do the same thing get the extra height if we need it and it makes it more stable the more level you can get the block uh, to sit on the neck, right? But now we can change our strings, boom, 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 no problem, right? Now, as far as the call goes, the neck call, that is generally used when your neck is off the body. And um, what you'd do is you'd have it sitting like this, and it doesn't sit flush down in. You gotta have some height above, so this way you can work on your fret ends, right? And you would be able to work on your fret ends too on your acoustic using this. You just have to move the block back and forth, you know, because you're going to have some frets that are going to get blocked, right? But uh, generally this would sit flat on the table, and uh, the neck sits completely flat in here. It allows you room to, you know, even um, pull frets out and put new frets in because the neck is off the guitar. And these culls help keep the neck in one spot, which is kind of nice, you know, so it's not flying all over the place type of thing, um, you know, and it also helps protect the headstock too. And you can either take your tuners off or leave them on, same as your nut. It's kind of up to you how you do things. But you can do fret maintenance uh, with the cull, which works really good. So anyways, um, that's the tools. Now, I'm going to do a video on how to make the cull, and the process will be pretty much the exact same thing uh, for the next support, except, you know, you're going to laminate, well, in this case, one, two, three, four, four pieces of wood together, 
Uh, you're going to laminate them together to make a block, unless you can get yourself, uh, maybe even a, you could do a 4x4 four four if you wanted to, and then add some extra meat underneath to raise the height up to where you need it, uh, type of thing. Now, these, these tools don't have to look pretty. They have to be functional, and they have to be safe for the guitar, which is why you get cork, and you line these suckers with cork. And uh, I'm going to show you in the video on how that cork is pressed in here and glued in because uh, you can't just simply take the cork and press it in place and glue it you know and expect it to stay there you have to actually uh, have a tube of some sort um, and then you know tape it down really tight or clamp it somehow uh, so that the cork stays and then you let the glue sit for about 24 hours and uh, depending on the glue you're using and uh then you just trim off all the excess. You want excess on the ends and on the tops. Then you can trim it to size, give it a light angle sanding uh, with some 320 grit, and uh, voila, away you go. So these aren't, uh, you know, anything that, you know, I, I didn't really worry about, you know, having them, like, look really super pretty in the end. Um, they have to be functional. And I've looked at these things to buy them online, and even ones that are just a plain wood finish when they got the cork on them. I mean, they're not much different than this, you know, some of them. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, you're, you're talking anywhere from $20 to $60 just for the cull, you know. And plus shipping. Depending on where you get it from, too, right? I mean, you can get them a little cheaper. Uh, but generally about 20 bucks and up, depending where you're buying them from. So the, the roll of cork I bought, uh, you know, it's like three feet long, two feet uh, wide, um, or 30, well, it's 36 by 24 by an eighth of an inch thick. And uh, that cost me uh, $12 with tax uh, for that big roll, so I can make a lot of these things. Um, you know, so it was minuscule amount. I had scrap wood laying around my shop. It's like, okay, let's laminate some stuff together here. And, way we go you know but you could even have done this out of a two by four so this is a this is three inches across on this one and uh the other one is just over uh three inches wide uh which is you know but which but what you're looking for about what you want and you go about an inch down on this one this one i actually went a little over an inch uh which is no big deal but i wanted that extra support um, just in case, you know, I end up working on a little bit wider neck, I want it to fit a little bit better in there, um, you know, and that helps too. But uh, I definitely will be doing a, a how-to video on how this is done because you're going to need a table saw. And table saws are generally not designed to make cove cuts, but there is a way to do it safely without damaging your saw or anything else for that matter. And uh, I still have my saw set up, so... Um, I'll start the process of that video. It's going to take me two days, but for you guys, it'll be not a very long video, okay? Um, it's just that the boards, have, uh, they'll be ready by the morning. I can trim them out, um, show you, you know, how we trim them out to size on the saw, and then we'll start doing the cove cut, or I'll just trim them out and then just have it set up for the cove cut. We'll figure it out either way. You'll know on that video how it all gets done in the end. Uh, but do keep yourself around a piece of scrap, especially if you're going to do this with just a square bottom like this. Uh, this way, if you need to angle it up, you can. You know, so just, this is only about maybe half an inch thick. You know, it is about all it is. And that helps with just a little bit of extra support and angle to it. And, uh, you know, you're golden. So no big deal. So this is a big improvement from the last device that I built which is kicking around here somewhere in my mess of tools and stuff. Um, yeah, good question. Where did I put it? But, uh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Way at the back over here. So, this is my first version of a neck support slash hull system here and uh, it does work really well you know um, so we'll, we'll grab the electric here now the back end bracket is kind of flat back here um, the only thing that can be a pain 
is working on a guitar like this because the body's in place, right? So the way this was designed was to not have a body in the way, right? So it would be just the neck and uh, it would be okay. But I was finding I had a few issues with it that were bugging me and I wanted something better. Now, not that this doesn't work, it works fine, you know, but like I said, a few little issues and then trying to keep everything in place properly. Um, it still may be a useful tool, um, you know, in the end either way. I still may get some use out of this yet, uh, but in the meantime, I thought, well, let's build something a lot better, you know, and cover it in cork. Uh, the felt is fine too. You can also use leather, uh, not a big deal. But, uh, like I said, this was my first version, and it does work really well, but I also needed more compactness, and I wanted a more professional-looking tool than something like this. So, but anyways, guys, uh, that's what I got for you for today. So, that's our, net, this is called a neck support call, and this is just a uh, plain out neck support, you know, and uh, just cheap wood and laminate the stuff this was two layers laminated and uh, there's my mark actually so I didn't go any deeper because that's actually my one inch marker right there and uh, so we were okay there to stop at that point and uh, voila now you can finish this with tongue oil uh, with a stain of some sort you know and make it look even prettier if you want I don't care about making something like this look pretty I just want it to function and to function the way it's supposed to. And that's all that mattered to me in the end. So, and it does exactly that. It functions properly and no hassles. So, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the how-to video on how to make a neck support call.